The cosmos in its infinity often keeps our wanting minds in the dark as we try to comprehend and uncover its mysteries. With our advancing technology, will we be able to breach the stars and discover all the secrets of the universe? Today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three cosmic discoveries. Why the US once set off a nuclear warhead in space On the night of July 8, 1962, a rocket was launched by the US military, meant to test Starfish Prime, a nuclear warhead. Weapons specialist Greg Spriggs attended the sighting in his childhood. He was one of many in attendance to see this explosion in the skies all over Hawaii. People gathered and hosted social events and parties to celebrate the event, including a radio countdown. According to Spriggs, his father was trying to figure out which direction to look. He thought there was going to be this little flicker, so he wanted to make sure everybody was going to see it. The public was highly excited. Some hoped to commemorate the moment through photography trying to find a way to best frame this cosmic blast. The starfish was 500 times more powerful than the 1945 Hiroshima blast, a shocking 1.4 megatons, and exploded in what was far more than a mere flicker. Spriggs claims that when that nuclear weapon went off, the whole sky lit up in every direction. It looked like noon. The starfish detonated at the same altitude the International Space Station resides today, at 250 miles up into space. The man-made explosion's effects were visible from as far as New Zealand and lasted for an estimated 15 minutes due to the particles that intertwined with Earth's atmosphere. It was written in the High Low Tribune Herald. It looked as though the heavens had belched forth a new sun that flared briefly, but long enough to set the sky on fire. Allegedly, the electromagnetic blast set off the island's emergency sirens, temporarily shut down their radio stations and messed with radio waves and even caused a mass blackout, coating the area in darkness after the initial blast. Fortunately, following the Treaty of Limited Nuclear Test Ban between the UK, US and USSR, space has not been used as our local playground for tests like this since. The disasters which might follow should we try again would be catastrophic, especially now given we live in such an electronic-dependent society where a blackout could destroy our ways of communication, affect internet, radio waves, and put our society on temporary pause. Our magnetic field getting hit with enormous levels of radiation spells horrific things for us as a species, since it's our magnetic field that keeps us safe from the dangers of space and even our own sun. The year prior to the Starfish Prime space test in 1961, there were discussions in place between nations to ban the testing of nuclear weaponry. For three years, no tests were conducted, until the USSR broke this agreement by detonating 31 nuclear blasts, one being the fearsome Tsar bomber that, to this day, is the biggest nuclear explosion ever recorded. Explorer 1, the world's first artificial satellite, revealed that our magnetic field upholds a layer of radiation that circles the globe, titled the Van Allen Belts after their discoverer James Van Allen. It was believed that any astronaut or device we'd send into space would be affected by this heap of radiation, which was a huge concern for US scientists. They believed that Starfish Prime would only martially affect our planet's Van Allen Belts, if at all. The fallout of it shocked scientists to their core. They knew there would be no mushroom cloud, given that space lacked an environment. However, the radiation belt was deeply affected by the blast. Starfish Prime's ionized radiation particles fused with the radiation inside the Van Allen belts and strengthened it and made it even more dangerous. The effect lasted an entire decade and completely ruined Telstar 1 and Ariel 1, satellites used for early broadcasts on television. To this day, radiation from that test resides in the atmosphere. NASA rockets sent to assess Alpha Centauri NASA sent two rockets into space meant to conduct experiments and tests to see whether the stars of the solar system Alpha Centauri and their UV light are of any danger to the planets around them. 
They hoped that this research will provide insight into how normal or abnormal our sun is in the scheme of ordinary solar systems. It will also help us to see whether there are changes of potential life on the planets of Alpha Centauri, or whether the UV light deletes any opportunity for life. The solar system lies only 4.3 light-years away and is one of the closest systems near us. Two stars reside in the system, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. The two are binary suns. There is a third star called Proxima Centauri, but it is thought there are no planets orbiting these stars. We don't know this for certain, however. UV light, as we understand it, is required to build life. It breaks up molecules and allows them to reform into improved, complex molecules that allow life to grow. Too much of it makes water vapor dissolve and can go as far as to strip planets' atmospheres. Mars is an example of this since it lacks a magnetic field to protect it from the Sun's radioactive UV rays. According to astrophysicist Brian Fleming from the University of Colorado, understanding ultraviolet radiation is extremely important to understanding what makes a planet habitable. Fleming is the primary researcher for the investigation JUICE, or the Dual Channel Extreme Ultraviolet Continuum Experiment, as well as the Cystine or Suborbital Imaging Spectrograph for transition region irradiance from nearby exoplanet host stars. The Cystine rocket was the first to be launched with JUICE, following a few days later from Australia's Arnhem Space Centre. This space centre is privately owned and has launched NASA's X-ray quantum calorimeter prior to these rockets. Alpha Centauri is only visible from the Southern Hemisphere, making Australia the best place to launch as the solar system lies in the height of Australia's skies. Cystine and JUICE work hand-in-hand, hand, as Cystine collects ultraviolet wavelength data at longer distances, whereas JUICE is made to collect data of close-up ultraviolet light. This ensures that the data is accurate and thorough and that nothing escapes the research. Scientists struggle with observing stars due to the Earth's magnetic field which blocks UV light to protect our planet. This means that sending telescopes into space directly is the most effective way to obtain data. Kevin France, who is another astrophysicist from the University of Colorado, notes that looking at Alpha Centauri will help us check if other stars like the Sun have the same radiation environment or if there are a range of environments. Astronomers might have found mysterious black holes hidden throughout universe. We have known about the existence of black holes for a long time. To this day, however, much remains unknown about them as it is difficult to conduct proper research into these mysterious, all-devouring entities. Black holes are generally the size of stars, if not bigger, in the case of colossal super-black holes. The largest black holes can be the enormous size of millions of stars bundled together. And yet, scientists found that there is a missing puzzle piece. We have small black holes and colossal black holes, and yet, what of the medium-sized black holes? This mystery has been confusing astronomers for years, but we might have finally solved it. According to Vivienne Baldesser, assistant professor at Washington State University, most of the theories for their formation rely on conditions that are found only in the very early universe. We wanted to test another theory that says they can form throughout cosmic time in these really dense star clusters. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, which is the planet's most powerful X-ray telescope, was used to look into the matter. It was created to notice even the slightest X-ray data from outer space, and scientists used it to find signs of black holes close to nuclear star clusters across over a hundred galaxies. Balder says researchers are attempting to track nuclear star cluster formed black holes since their density makes it likely that they create them. We expect many of these black holes to be in the intermediate mass regime between supermassive black holes and stellar mass black holes, where there is very little evidence for their existence. Less than a single percent of stars turn into supernovas, which often become nothing but beautiful space dust. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope revealed that in the place of supernova SN2012Z, a star still remained. University of California professor Andy Howell states, Nature tried to strike this star down, but it came back more powerful than we could have imagined. 
It's still the same star, but back in a different form. It transcended death. Curtis McCulley, the lead author of the study, added, Nobody was expecting to see a surviving star that was brighter. That was a real puzzle. SN2012Z was a strange type of supernova, more gradual than most. It is thought that perhaps it is a failed supernova that might leave behind an eventual black hole. The theory follows that this star only partially exploded and increased its brightness as a result, yet the supernova failed to turn the star into a nebula. The thought is that although medium-sized black holes are rare, they are formed similarly to these failed supernovas. But, of course, all this is merely a working theory. But what do you make of these incredible discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.